So cold in here! Oh my gosh! Dave, could you turn off the AC in the studio? I'm freezing here! Oh, Orb, it's not that. It's that four-letter word you don't like. You mean? No! Not that, 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 that word! No, yes, a fall! No! If I hear that word, I go, ah! Ow! Oh! 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 Su summer's over? Yes, Orb, summer's over. Ah! Oh, bummer! Oh, well, I have to go get a pumpkin spice latte then. Uh, everybody enjoy the show. <sighs> please, Dave, go. Can you get me a heater, please? I'll think about it. Oh my gosh. <sighs> have fun, everyone. It's the Justin News Comedy Club show with your very special guest stars Emily Pascal, Liz Frizius, Katie Blue. Devine Carr, and your headliner, Joel Brill, with co-host Christine Knowlton, and co-producer Annalisa Rod. And now, without further ado, the master of ceremonies, the man who is the heat and cold visor together, please welcome A-A-Ron! Yay! Yay! Have a fun show, y'all! Thank you for joining this Justin News Comedy Club show. We have an awesome show for you tonight. And it's been a week. It's been a week to where I'm doing this in the future. Yes, I know this is going to be weird, but I'm doing this in the future because someone forgot to hit the record button. I won't point fingers at anyone, but something happened. Not quite sure what happened, but I will find the person. Uh, other than that, it's going to, it was a, it was, it's an amazing show, and uh, guys, if you are here to watch this next comedian, please have your microphones on, because she is a hilarious comedian, and she's all the way from New Jersey, New York, New York, New York, please welcome to the stage, Katie Blue, everybody, woo, 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 woo. Thank you so much, um, I'm Katie Blue, you know, a lot of people don't like me at first or even after a long time, because um, I kind of give off like religious cult vibes, right? Like I look like I definitely would have been down to murder Sharon Tate. Um, <laughs> I want to look like a buttercup from the Princess Bride. And I just end up looking like the girl from the ring started listening to the Grateful Dead. Um, <laughs> I've been described before as quirky, um, which I think is just a nice way of calling me really annoying. Um, I well, like to call myself mysterious, which I think is a really cool way of saying that I'm autistic. Um, oh, oh, oh. Uh, I used to be a horse girl. Um, mm. Yeah, you know, I just really love doing heroin um, but oh. I've been clean for um like seven years now Woo! and uh thank you you know I, I did it for applause at comedy shows not to like be a better person or anything <laughs> like that um but a lot of times when people will meet me now um they'll say like they they can't believe that I used to do heroin and to that, I always have the same response, which is, well, do you have any heroin? <laughs> you know, I've heard people say before that, like, women can't handle their drugs or they can't handle their liquor, which I think is ridiculous because men can't handle anything at all. Uh, they can't handle a cold. They can't <laughs> handle their pain. They can't handle their autism. Um, <laughs> of using their diagnosis as an excuse to like harass women online um like that is not part of the criteria and if i can figure out how to make pizza rolls so can you um and I, know that, like, I know it's a spectrum but like 
so is sexuality and you still can't jerk off on the subway so you know <laughs> I, draw a line somewhere. <laughs> I started a new therapist recently um and she asked me she goes katie do you self-harm and i said yes um i do stand-up comedy <laughs> <laughs> I left my career recently. Um, I was a funeral director, but it just wasn't sad enough. So here I am. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted something stable and financially secure, like stand up comedy. Um, <laughs> oh. So I'm on unemployment. <laughs> but I'm trying to be smart about it, um, I'm trying to put it back into my community. Uh, so I started selling drugs. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm really going to like <laughs> boost the local economy of my apartment. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's it's been a rough year. Uh, we all got to do what we got to do, right? Um, you know, but it hasn't been all bad. Um, one of my friends finally felt comfortable enough to come out as trans. Um, I'm, I'm glad none of you just clapped, though, because they still owe me money regardless. I've been thinking about my own sexuality recently and um I'm pretty sure that I'm asexual maybe I'm just hanging around ugly people <laughs> <laughs> at this point I'm more attracted to a Sibian than I am to any human being yeah. Um, oh. for those of you who might not know what that is it is not a dog breed um it's it's basically just like a saddle that vibrates um i told you guys i was a horse girl right <laughs> <Giddy up. laughs> maybe i'm just too picky um i could be really picky it could be like really judgmental um like i'll be watching other comedians and i'll be like I don't know about that delivery, Dave Chappelle. Um, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> and that that has been a lot that, you know, the punchline to that joke for a while. But now that he has come out with this newest controversial special, I, I'm not sure if I should put another comedian in there. But then I think, you know, who's as good as Dave Chappelle and the only name that pops into my head is Katie Blue. So, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> but uh, he, he has been also doing a lot of other stuff besides controversial stand up. He's also been speaking out a lot about what's going on in our country, like with black lives matter and stuff like that. And, you know, as a comedian and as a white woman, I just have to stop and think to myself, how can I make this, about me <laughs> <laughs> you know there's there's a lot of uh a lot of interesting things going on in our country right now but i i got to go to a ladies night comedy uh the other night um Ooh. it was really cool it was really nice to get a break from all of the uh white guys who are <laughs> you know normally at uh at stand-up comedy shows um and a lot of guys will get on the mic and sort of joke about like women's issues and things they don't really experience like um, abortions and periods. And like, you don't see me getting up on the mic being like, oh, I just got a random boner. <laughs> or like, oh, I just got an undeserved promotion. <laughs> or, oh, I just got a bunch of guns to go shoot up a school. Uh, you know, like guy stuff. I don't know. There's only been one female school shooter. Her name is Brenda Spencer. And if you Google her, the image results you will get is this. But I am not Brenda Spencer. I am Katie Blue. So thank you very much for listening to me. Thanks so much. All right, let's give it up for Katie Blue, everybody. And Katie, where can we find you on social media? Uh, I am at Katie Blue comedy on instagram k-c-i-e-b-l-u-c-o-m-e-d-y oh yeah i spelled comedy right first try on instagram <laughs> and i am katie dash blue on venue k-t-i-e dash b-l-u 
on Venmo. Hit me up Venmo. on Venmo, right? Hit me up on Venmo. And do you For do, sure. do, do stand-up on Venmo? Else. Are you doing stand-up on Venmo? Because I've never seen the video up, up there. What's how's that work? Uh no, I'm just, you know, if you want to hit me up. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I see, because you know? are a, st a starving comedian. I understand that. Exactly. Because yeah. if you were to make your live, if you were to live like uh, off what you make off of this show, uh, it's coffee and donuts, <laughs> and uh, there's one donut left. That's it. That ain't anything left for. But thank you so much. Are you getting new? You getting thank you for having stuff? me. You're welcome. Uh, mm -hmm. One quick question: Do you have any live shows coming up? Uh, yeah, I'll be in Massapequa on the 17th. That's a Sunday coming up. So I don't know if this will be posted by then. But... Oh, it will be. It will be. So awesome. that, Very cool. that'll be great. Thank 17th. you so much, Katie. Ladies and gentlemen, the, let's welcome this very funny comedian all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. Please welcome the stage, Liz Frizius, everybody. Woo, 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 woo. Thank you for your host, everyone. <laughs> oh. Yes, I am Liz Frizius. I'm married to a man. <laughs> <laughs> uh. He's six Ooh. and five. His name is Richard. So the rumors are true. I do have a big dick. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> now, not to lecture anyone, but there's a couple things I know to be absolutely true. A baseball is not a football. Football is not a soccer ball. And a pretzel stick is not a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> A stick is something aggressive that you shove down the throat of people who won't shut up at the baseball game, the football game, or the soccer match. <laughs> Liz, Liz, point of order. You got to remember, in Germany, a soccer ball is called a football. Shut up, Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> there are some things in life that just need a good twist a martini a mystery and jenkins is under shorts oh. <laughs> <laughs> i bet you he ate paste in first grade mm. i bet you he actually thought ava was a good idea <laughs> 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 Uh, I bet you he wore parachute pants in the 80s and thought they were cutting edge fashion. Oh. <laughs> People who think pretzel sticks are pretzels shouldn't be allowed to breed. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't be allowed to vote. Mm. They shouldn't be allowed to pull the prize out of the Cracker Jack box. <laughs> See, I love pretzels. I spent 30 years of my life in the military and they're just as twisted and salty as I am. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, just like a pretzel, I'm great to have with a beer. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love the original pretzels. Pretzels were made as a reward for piety during Lent. It was the sign of arms crossed in prayer. Nowadays, People are trying to say that a priest giving a kid a salty stick as a reward just doesn't give the right image. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, all these companies are bailing on board. You've got Uts, you've got World Gold, you've got Combos. What is Uts anyway? Uts is the sound a guy makes when you smack him right in the... <laughs> Solar plexus. Oh. What were you thinking of? Uh. <laughs> That's what I thought. And world gold. That sounds like a condom. <laughs> <laughs> you can roll a car, you can roll a joint, you can roll in the hay, but you cannot roll a pretzel. Mm. Uh, Liz, uh, point of order. Um, there is such a thing as a pretzel roll. Shut up, Jenkins! <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that needs a good twist is Jenkins' titties because he's driving me up the wall claiming a pretzel stick as a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, <laughs> rolled gold. Yeah, the gold schlager of condoms. Mm. <laughs> and combos. Who came up with combos? You know what a combo is? It's what you get when a pretzel stick has marital relationships with a hot pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I love pretzels. They're the twisted sister of sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever says a pretzel stick is a pretzel is using twisted logic. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, yes. Like I said, I spent 30 years in the military and my husband was also military. And the biggest problem is anybody who has ever said all is fair in love and war has never been in either one. God. <laughs> <laughs> we have 16 deployments between the two of us we have we're living proof that abs you know absence makes the heart grow fonder unlike for our divorced colleagues where abstinence made the heart go wander <laughs> <laughs> straight up the express lane from courting to divorce courting oh <laughs> problem is after i got out i found out i have trouble communicating with my co-workers now i spent 30 years on active duty and my co-workers spent 30 hours on call of duty <laughs> <laughs> well ladies and gentlemen that is my time i'm liz Frisius. have a great night and keep it going for your host a ron all right let's give it up for liz Frisius, everybody and liz where can we find you on social media you can find me on Facebook at Liz Frisius and at the website www.lizfrisius or sorry liz-frisius.com. Sweet, and all your shows are up there. Or are you are you you're doing a lot of live mics right out in Arizona? Actually, we have a lot of live shows going uh, at the moment. I'm booked at Cactus Jacks for the Haha Tuki Comedy Show on the 14th Ooh. of October. I've got a corporate show on the 4th of November, and then I'll be at Sir Crazy Comedy Club. Sweet. And she has a show in between there, too. It's a Halloween show, I believe. She's going to be on the Halloween show. I can't wait to see what Liz Frizzius dresses up as for our Halloween show. Thank you so much, Liz. Oh, you're so awesome. Hey, you know what, Christine? I, I mean, this is crazy. I mean, look, she was talking about pretzels, and I'm hungry. I'm really hungry for a pretzel. But all I have is the graham cracker pretzels upstairs. I'm just blowing, I'm blowing Liz's mind right now. Yes, I know, my wife found them. I didn't find these things. It, but the problem is they don't taste good with ranch. They just, <laughs> they just taste disgusting. It's just wrong. Are you, sure, are, you, are you sure this isn't the Halloween show? <laughs> You're scaring me. You're scared. <laughs> yeah, it could be, it could be horror food. Yes, horror food. Yes, it's like, oh my gosh, graham cracker pretzels. I mean, you there's a lot of weird food in the world. And that one, it was like, I looked at the bag and I said, I got to send this to Liz. I do have to send this to Liz because she was telling me about her pretzel jokes. I'm going to have to send those to Liz. I'm going to find something to send them to her just to blow her mind. And she could throw it at the whoever's out there at the stage. These are not real. <laughs> <laughs> Pretzel sticks are not pretzels. Pretzel Ooh. sticks are not pretzels. Yeah, I'm going to keep that in mind. Every time my wife gets some pretzel sticks, we do have some ones that are really hot or honey mustard. And I'm just going to look at her and go, these are not pretzels. They are not pretzels. Oh, my gosh. All right. Thank you so much, Liz. And I want to, I want to get to our next comedian. Uh, she's a very funny comedian all the way from California. Please welcome Emily Pascal, everybody. woo all right yay okay we're good good <laughs> thank you guys that's fine i uh, got it so let me tell you why you need skills if you're a princess right reading that's one. Oh, hmm, yep i can do that one uh singing you know like i, I don't know they all oh, i can do that yep <laughs> sewing I'll, I'll take that one. Um, and canoeing, like Pocahontas. She's one of the princesses, uh, and that's, I'm close enough on that one. So, you also need a name, don't you? Yes. There's Snow White, right? We've got Elsa, the Ice Queen. And my family calls me Princess Bipolar. Yeah. 
Oh. And, but, oh. <laughs> that sums it up, really. I mean, it's kind of kind of gotten rough around here. And like Snow White, who's my personal favorite princess, I also have to clean up after my dwarf. That's right. <laughs> you can laugh. My husband is a little person. That's not the joke. Okay. The other thing, here, you guys, if he were a dwarf, his name would probably be Douchey. Can I say that as PG-13? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Okay. <laughs> right? So you can't see it well from this picture. I'll describe him a little bit for you. I like to say he is like if you took Jason Momoa, right? And you got him wet and sweaty and you popped him in the dryer on high and he just went like, oh, that's what he would look like. <laughs> He's Latino. So I like to say we're in an interracial and interspatial relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my dad uh, was a pastor come from a pretty small town conservative and it was always hard to tell him that I was dating someone and it's even harder when someone of another race and I'm sure you can only imagine how hard it is to say they're a dwarf no no I'll work on that one uh, <laughs> too true too true all right so when you are married to a little person there are a lot of stools involved yes stools the one stepper very important, most useful. It comes in all sizes. You've got wood, you've got plastic, you've got metal. I can trip over them in the evening. I can kick them around the house. That's how it works. Okay. <laughs> you got your two step, other hand, two stepper, two stepper. That is the MVP. You can use that pretty much anywhere. He can reach a lot of stuff with it. He doesn't have to yell for my help anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seriously, if I have to hang another picture, I'm going to lose it. Yeah. <laughs> this, one's, this one is elusive. I'm waiting to get one. I'm hoping for Christmas. The three-stepper. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you don't understand how this would change my life. Okay. Mm. Anything more than three steps is a ladder. So that's your educational <laughs> moment here. Uh, when I moved in with my husband, it was, it was really a change. I was, um, unpacking in the kitchen and I, I opened the bottom drawers and I was like, oh, nothing, nothing. But in the top, that one, I messed up. Wonderful. <laughs> Moving up. <laughs> I got one minute. So I'm going to call it couples yoga. So when we're doing couples yoga, right. And we're doing the doggy pose, he's standing up. He doesn't get a cramp in his leg like all the guys do. No. <laughs> and if he gets tired, he just kind of puts his hands here on my shoulders, relaxes. And I'm going to jump to this one, guys. Spooning. Mm. Does anyone else like spooning? Woo. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Thank you. Somebody, right? So I always have to be the outside spoon. And when he, it's like, I'm wearing a baby Bjorn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> oh. And when he's the outside spoon, it's like I'm wearing a fucking pack. I'm not supposed to have. It's oh. like I'm wearing a backpack. <laughs> I'm going to let that marinate with you. I dropped too many bad ones there, but I am Emily Pascal. I am a real life Disney princess. Thank you. That is my time. Give it up for Emily Pascal, everybody. And Emily, where can we find you on social media? Oh, you can find me under Emily R. Pascal. R as in Robert. Yeah, Emily R. Pascal. And uh, I don't have any shows upcoming yet, but I do run a nonprofit called Stand Ups for a Cause. Oh. We are always looking for charities that want to raise money. And uh, we do the show for free. We set it up and you get all the proceeds. And we got some amazing comics. And um, that's, that's what I've got going on right now. You can find them online at Stand Ups for a Cause. Uh, on Instagram and Twitter. All right. Go check that out. Stand ups for a cause. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much, Emily. Oh my gosh. And then I realized that on tech side, I forgot to hit a button. Oh my uh, gosh. Of all the buttons to forget to hit, it's the record button. So I apologize. I will get back with Katie later and say, can you just help me record? And I will laugh my butt off for your set. <laughs> 
oh, it happens once in a while. It's Zoom, and you have it all set up, and you're like, all right, go, good. And I didn't look up, and someone said, did you hit that button? No, no, but I did now. So Emily got most of it, and uh, but I will get back with Katie after the show. I know she had to run away. She ran away. I think she's still in New York. I think some of that's still flooded, so I'm not sure she's not paddling her way out, but I'm sure she will get back to her soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just floating away there, just floating away. You know, yeah. I think, yeah, I, you know what? That was very funny with Emily. I, I never thought of watching a storm channel. I really never thought of watching just a storm channel. I thought that was what the weather channel was, to be honest with you. <laughs> me too. That one really blew me away. Oh, oh. yeah. Uh. I don't want to rain on your parade, but you know, it's just kind of, it's kind of dreary. Uh I guess yeah, you're I always lost in the fog. You're always lost. Ah, there's so many puns that goes with this, isn't there? But it's just, I think we're going to stop right here and hopefully the, the sun breaks out. And okay, we're done. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're getting up to our next comedian. She's a very funny lady, all the way from Washington, D.C. Please welcome to the stage, Davine Kerr, everybody. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Hello, hello. Wow. I haven't Zoom Zoom in a while. Sounds naughty. <laughs> <laughs> I've been going live and it's been so great. I've been seeing matching couples again, which they fascinate me, especially when they're both ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so unlike all of you, I'm Devine Kerr. And, <laughs> and you know, um, you know, I was at a live show last Wednesday and um, I walked in with my mask and with my tripod and people looked at me like I was going to attack somebody and they're like, ma'am, can I help you? And I'm like, I just assumed they knew I was a comedian, right? So I was like, I'm trying to find a strategic spot for my tripod. And it's like, ma'am, this is a restaurant. And I'm like, oh, can you recommend me something to eat? And I took my mask off and three white ladies just rushed to me and they said, we, we have a cauliflower bowl. <laughs> and we have <laughs> Korean nachos. <laughs> and we have teriyaki burgers. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, can you give me the secret menu where white people order blandy, bland, bland food, please? <laughs> <laughs> like, why, where can I get white sauce and black pepper? Like, and they're like, ma'am, we thought you would like this dish. And I'm like, what do you think this Asian ass is going out of her house for? Okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, I, just give me the boring stuff, you know? And they're like, oh, okay. And anyway, so I perform and they were all like surprised that I was doing comedy. And I'm like, yeah, I look like I have my stuff together. That's why you didn't know I was a comic. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> It was great. Um, what was great also is that I didn't, I didn't need to bring my poopy shoes because, you know, sometimes <laughs> I, I, I will swap. I would have to pack an extra pair of shoes because if I have to go to the restroom and do number two before a show, I don't want people to recognize my shoes and then ah! see me on the stage and be like, oh, I've smelled her doo-doo, you know? And I'm like... <laughs> 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 but, but this time, I mean, there was nobody because, you know, they said you had to socially distance in the bathroom, <clears> which I, was, I thought it was great. But um, anyways, and, I, and then I was hearing girls talk and they were ranting. They were like, ah, you know, I'm so moody. I'm weird because of the full moon. You know, the full moon's affecting me so much. And I'm like, it's so strange that you blame the moon for your mood swings. Because if you go in outer space, the moon's always full. <laughs> <laughs> We're all worries about flat earthers, but you gotta like check out all the half mooners out there, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, I don't know. Anyways, um, so no, I did my set and it was okay. But um, anyways, I, I'm glad I only have two kids and I'm not back into diaper modes. You know, I hear my friends are like, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, your life is over. Um, <laughs> My, my husband snip you know he's all juice no pulp now um <laughs> i see some guys always cringe when i talk about the vasectomy and i'm like come on guys don't worry a seedless grape is still a grape you know <laughs> you're still very very manly <laughs> <laughs> 
And then, you know, but then I have people who are like, oh, you have two boys. Oh, poor you, poor darling. But you want a little girl. Girls are sweet. They love you forever. And I'm like, yeah, I'm missing out. I always wanted to have a daughter and breastfeed her and have people call us lesbians. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. By the way, obviously, you can all tell by looking at me that I'm French Canadian, right? Hmm. I guess not. Mm-hmm. I mean, somebody in West Virginia said like, no, I can't tell. I, I think you look, um, I think you're from like Hawaii or, you know, but I, I can't blame her because even Cambodians don't know I'm Cambodian, you know, like they'll talk about stuff uh, in my face, you know, Cambodian and, and I'll just pretend I'm Hawaiian or my husband looks Japanese too. So they all talk behind our backs and I just love it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, basically they say stuff like I have nice boobs and tall legs and I'm fantastic. And, you know, I'll take the compliment, but, um, <laughs> but you know, I, I was surprised because when I moved to the U S I expected more hot dog joints. Like you thought, I thought hot dogs were American and there's just no hot dogs anywhere. There's just tons of Hooters. And I was thinking, why don't they have the equivalent of Hooters, but called Schlung instead, you know? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I just love hot dogs, but I have random, very random. But um, I just feel like I love America, but I feel like everyone's very self-centered. Like the entire planet is getting a vaccine, but America thinks it's a conspiracy only for the US. Like mm. we never get along. Everybody's at war, but for that one conspiracy, we all get along to fool America. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like they're all to coming together for that one purpose. But you know, you can't blame politics or anything like that because even people like sometimes I, I can't even bond with a friend. You know, like I'll try to nerd out. I'll watch a, a let's say a fashion show with a friend, and I'll be like, "What do you think about this nice structure and this design?" And she'll be like, "I wouldn't wear that." I'm like, I don't care if your fat ass would wear that or not. I didn't ask you if you would wear that. I'm telling you. <laughs> do you think this design is nice or not? Objectively, do you like the this? Is it avant-garde? Is it? I wouldn't wear that. I'm like, get over yourself. Moi, 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 me, moi, moi, le fashion. I don't know. I'm just really annoyed. That's all. Um, <laughs> um, and you know, when people ask me where I come from, I always like to respond, La La Land. Because I'm I'm so romantic, you know, like I've been married for 20 years and um and I just I'm corny, you know, like when I when I look at cute couples and I tell them you guys are so cute, you're meant for each other, they always say like, but we haven't been tested yet. We we haven't fought yet. Mm. I'm like, why don't you buy a car and slam it into a wall to see if it's a good car? <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> that's how <laughs> you know it's a solid relationship. I don't know. Oh, you know some people will be like oh you and your husband you're so cute you're like two peas inside of a pod and i'm like you know there's not there's only have you ever seen two peas inside of a pod there's at least five peas in a pod peas are polyamorous (laughs) (laughs) and that ladies and gentlemen is the secret of my happiness (laughs) okay (laughs) Uh, you know um there's a lot of you know, people are strange when they talk about love. You know, I hear like these love declarations, like, oh, she's so cute. You know, she crinkle her nose when she smiles. And I'm like, wow, that's so generic. Like, do you say, oh, she's adorable. Her eyes get watery every time she yawns, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like people should, you don't settle for generic compliment. You deserve better. You deserve a very specific one. Like, I love, like when my husband talks about me, he says, oh, I love how your mole twitches every time I get too close to your butthole. <laughs> that i know he really only talks about me it's really no one else i'm special i'm his lady <laughs> oh. Oh. anyways um i've been trying to compose a, a jazz tune i'm trying to learn some jazz keys very weird segue i know mm. but that's that's what jazz is is random right so even my thoughts are jazzy um but you know, <laughs> You know, they say the art of jazz is the art of missing every right note. And that's why there's a lot of jazz players that are male, because men are known to miss all the key spots, you know? Oh! (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, except for my man, of course, but... um, (laughs) (laughs) He's wonderful, you know? Um, But, um, yeah, you know... you know, another thing I don't like when couples talk about each other, they're like, I love you so much. Please don't ever change. That's a red flag. Run for your life. They want to freeze you like Walt Disney. 
Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be hurt, scarred, and and becoming disgusting, gross, bitter people together. Okay, you're supposed to change. And so, anyways, um, what else? Well, another thing is, you know, I talk about people not knowing where I come from. You know what I love is when I go to a nail salon and there's a Vietnamese lady who says, "Are you Vietnamese?" <laughs> I'm like, you can't tell if I'm one of yours. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I will lie because, you know, liaison between Thai, uh, between Vietnam and Cambodia is still a little like rough. So I'll say I'm Filipina and they'll be like, oh, that's why you're fat. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll say, well, anyways, and I'm like, okay, well, so anyway, she does her thing. She comes back. I, obviously, I'm a douche. I plugged my website to her. And when she checked it out, she came back. And she said, you're a liar. Your website says you're Cambodian. You said you're Filipina, you're a liar. And I said, well, your name's not Trish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, then, and, then, and then we'll talk, you know, and I try to stay chill about everything and relax. And then she'll be like, she'll ask my age. And when I tell her, she's like, oh, you don't look your age. And I'll say, well, you don't look your intelligence. I don't know why people assume I want to look young. Like I would never go back in time because when I was a teenager, I had zits and I couldn't squirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there goes a PG-13. I apologize. My oh, name is Devine okay. Kerr. Enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> All right, let's yeah. give Devine a big round of applause. And Devine, where can we find you on social media? I'm at Devine DC in Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Clubhouse. And on there, you can see all the list of the shows because I have too many to list. So. Oh, yeah. Look at that. She's just killing it everywhere in the DC area. The DMV, right? The DMV area? Mostly, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, sweet. And some mom. And she did this online show. Thank you so much, Devine, for being on tonight. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. And, you know, she reminds me my wife was uh, picking on something recently. Uh, she had to have a tooth removed. She says, I don't feel whole anymore. I'm missing a tooth. I said, woman, I'm missing three. <laughs> <laughs> you serious? I'm missing three teeth. I'm not whole either. And I'm like, she's wondering where her tooth went. I said, probably down the drain. I'm not sure where it went. But... <laughs> I mean, she made me feel not all there. That's what it is. I don't know. She was just not being very nice about it. But that's okay. She was still under anesthesia when she said it. I think that was Tuesday, and that uh, that was on a Saturday when that happened. I'm not sure how that worked, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway, you might not feel whole, but now you are holy. Yes, I am holy. I don't have to go to church on Sunday. I just have to. All I have to do is grin without my fake tooth in the front, and I have a holy smile. Oh, <laughs> uh, or meth head depends on wh where you're at in Detroit. It's just uh, just the way it goes. <laughs> All right, so now we're up to our headliner, and this guy is hilarious. I think Joel's him. coming up. <laughs> God, is that you? I, I knew you were talking about holy. <laughs> Apparently, I was talking to God when I said this earlier. So let's please welcome the stage a very funny comedian all the way from Northbridge, California, Joel Brew, everybody. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. Woo! -hoo. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> somebody in the background honey joel's on uh, <laughs> and she left the room uh, oh i was talking to my 90 year old mother and she was telling me uh about another new boyfriend that she had when he lost you and um i you know i said to her mom where do you meet all these guys and she goes, well, there's a website for people my age. It's called carbondating.com. That's my joke. <laughs> and, and if you didn't get that joke, let me just tell you this. My son gets that joke. And he's an idiot. He's an idiot. <laughs> Seriously, I have a bumper sticker that said, my son graduated college, and he's still an idiot. Uh... <laughs> I... Uh, uh, I don't know if you're all drinking back there, out there, but uh, I, I don't I don't drink. Um, I developed an aversion to alcohol at a very young age. I was totally consumed in vodka for like nine months. 
And then thank God my mother gave birth to me. <laughs> my cousin Freddie is flamboyantly gay and he came out of the closet about five years ago and um, he told everybody at a family meeting and he goes, you know, do you think anybody knew I was gay? I said, Freddie, I think you were the only one who didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, Freddie died and Aww. instructions to be cremated. Uh, typical Freddie, he didn't say what to do with the ashes. So five years of being out, and Freddie's back in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of gay, my uh, <clears throat> good friend asked me if I'd like to perform at his gay comedy club. Mm. Said, sure, sure. Wait, what do you mean by perform? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not falling for that one again. <laughs> and, you know, the, the show, we all assume it's called the green room. And, and, and this one guy, you know, it's the year 2020, uh, 21, rather. And this this one gay comic is like, this is same sex marriage wonderful. Don't you think same sex marriage is great? And I, you know what? I looked at the guy and I said, no, I don't think so. My wife and I've had the same sex for 45 years. But. <laughs> My wife said uh, the other night, she goes, you know, I, I think our sex life is getting too mechanical. I said, you're the one that wanted me to wear a tool belt. <laughs> oh. I, uh, I work with a lot of charities. I, I perform at their fundraisers. And, and uh, there's one charity in particular I'm really fond of. And I want you to be aware of them. It's called the Tempura House. Ladies and gentlemen, the Tempura House is a shelter for the lightly battered women. <laughs> um, I recently lost uh, over 100 pounds. Woo! Yeah. Um, I had uh, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes had four heart surgeries and I kept like eating like there's no tomorrow. My cardiologist said, you keep eating like that. There will be no cook tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hardest thing for me was, was buying clothes. Cause what you don't understand, uh, unless you're in my boat is there's, there are plenty of stores for the big and tall man. They got nothing for the short and fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> Buying pants was my biggest nightmare. Uh, I, every time I shop, I got depressed. Um, I came home one time and my wife handed me a pair of her old maternity pants. I'm like, maternity pants? Yeah. Awesome. Oh my <laughs> God. Be great. You can eat a huge meal and afterwards you don't have to unbuckle your pants. <laughs> Next day, I uh, I went to the maternity store looking for pants, and the woman was helping me pick out pants. And I was getting ready to uh, check out, and she looked at me and said, "I don't know if you're interested, but we're having a sale on uh, sports bras." No! <laughs> oh. oh my god! Oh, that hurt, and I I'm like. Ladies and gentlemen, that, that's when I knew it was time to go and uh, lose some weight. <laughs> the weight loss was a journey. I mean, it was a, a lot of different steps. And the first step was uh, I joined a gym. And that was a rather unpleasant experience. The people that ran my gym, they were dicks. I, I was on the exercise bike one day for an hour and a half. An hour and a half. Mm. Manager comes over and with a real attitude goes, sir, if you're not going to pedal, 
<laughs> and then he reached over and took one of my donuts. Oh. <laughs> I told you he was a dick. <laughs> the second thing I did in the process was I don't know about maybe some of you can understand this or uh, agree with it. I, I've been on every single diet at least two or three times. Mm. I've been on and off Jenny Craig more times than Mr. Craig. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my buddy said, try a 12 step program. And I'm like, dude. I'm 140 pounds overweight. I get winded going six steps. <laughs> He's like, no, no, man. Like 12 steps, like alcohol, it's synonymous, narcotics synonymous. And I uh, went with him to an alcoholics anonymous meeting. And I walked into the first meeting and I looked around. I, I got to tell you, I was really surprised. These people didn't look like drunken bums. I, <laughs> his brother to, uh, Narcotics Anonymous. And I walked in and I looked around. I got to tell you, I was surprised. These people didn't look like crackheads. <laughs> I went to an OA meeting, Overeaters Anonymous meeting. I walked in, I looked around. Folks, there's nothing anonymous about this. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I walked in, hi, I'm Joel, I'm an overeater. Yeah, no kidding, fat boy. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I went back to AA because they serve donuts. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, who I lovingly refer to as my little dream killer, <laughs> she said, you ought to see a therapist. You know, he's acting angry. So I'm not acting. <laughs> I'm seeing a therapist. I'm seeing a therapist. She's frustrated with me. We were halfway through a session. She's like, oh, okay, that's different. Let's play a fantasy game. Hmm. You do it over. Would you marry your wife again? I said, no. She said, what if that meant you wouldn't have the same kids you have today? Like, oh, this game just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> she said one of the things you should do every morning first thing get on a scale naked weigh yourself and you'll be surprised next morning I got on the scale naked and surprised they won't let me back in the gym <laughs> <laughs> told you they were dicks <laughs> I like this show. It, it, it's on at seven o'clock for people in the East, but for me in LA, it's four o'clock. Mm -hmm. The hardest thing about uh, doing comedy at my age is staying up so late. So this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I'm old, but my primary medical team it consists of a cardiologist, a urologist, and a paleontologist. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to tell you something. When you talk to old people, if they seem confused, it's because you young people keep changing the meaning of words we use our whole lives. Like, give me an example. To me, a hacker is somebody with bronchitis. <laughs> if something goes viral you need to see a doctor <laughs> and friends with benefits well that's the friend with social security and medicare <laughs> that I'm having sex with <laughs> and in my day blowing a tranny meant you had major car problems 
a stand for this one. Let's see if I can pull it off standing. So my friend Murray has Parkinson's disease and it really shows up in his right hand. And our little grandkids play soccer together. We came one day and I'm standing there with Murray. I'm around, I'm like, dude, your hand's really freaking the little kids out. Can you do something about it? Murray put his hands in his pocket. <laughs> 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 Murray's court dates next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. ladies and gentlemen, y'all have been a little slice of heaven. I'm Joel Brill. Thanks a lot. Let's give Joel Brill a big round of applause. And Joel, where can we find you on social media? Uh, everywhere. Uh, Joel Brill. Um, with the exception of uh, you got to check me out on TikTok because that's a, a lot of fun. Every day I'm posting two or three jokes mm. and uh, funny things. Um, Joel Brill comedy on TikTok. Sweet. Go check out Joel Brill. He's on TikTok and I'm not even there. I'm not even sure. I think I have to get through the AARP website to get on TikTok for myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's my right God. Me. You're that's welcome. Right. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, Christine, we had such a great show, didn't we? For the most we part, that we recorded. Um, we will have a little recording session after this just to catch at least one person, I think. But that was an awesome show, and wow. I mean, we couldn't have done much better than we did with a little technical issues. That happens. That always happens. But you know what? It's Zoom. It's not like you ever have that problem on stand-up comedy where someone doesn't show up and... <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, you know, they canceled the last minute or, you know, the microphone doesn't work. No, that never happens. That never happens <laughs> at all. No, I don't know what I'm talking about whatsoever. Oh, but this has been a great show. Thank you, Christine, for being my co-host tonight. It has been a blast. Oh. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It was, it was a great night of comedians. Yes, it was. And I want to give you all guys a big round of applause. I want to give Katie Blue, Liz Frizius, Emily Pascal, Devine Kerr, and Joel Brill. You guys are all awesome. And also Christine Knowlton is a co-host and the tech co-producer, Annalisa Wright, who made this look really smooth because I would make it look like Rocky Road ice cream at this point. I obviously <laughs> don't know how to run tech, but she did make this look awesome. Thank you so much. And that was the show for tonight, guys. The next show is October 29th. That is the special, special Halloween show. It's going to have 10 comedians, so it's obviously not going to be an hour. But everybody has to show up who's going to be on the show in costume. Now, I might have two or three different changes for me. But you have to be in costume. You have to do a minute worth of comedy. It's going to be a blast. I already have the lineup. I just got to get that poster put together. It's going to be a ticket sale. But if you're a friend of the show, you get in for free. What do you know? I'm a nice guy about that because we want to hear laughs and it's going to be a blast. And the best costume gets a $10 prize and a trophy made by me. Like I said, it's just scary what I do with hot glue and, and the plastic skeletons. Obviously, that's what my wife says anyway. But anyways, thank you so much for being on tonight, watching us. And this has been an oddly funny production. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank you. has been an oddly funny production.